this tutoring session, we're going to be covering Hotelli's role in dynamic efficiency over multiple periods. So first, I'm going to explain how dynamic efficiency works. We're going to examine uh, an extraction of a non-renewable resource in one time period. We're going to use the givens that I have written up on the board here. Um, we have a total extractable quantity of 1,200 units. We have a constant marginal cost of $400. Um, we have a demand where price equals 2,000 minus quantity. And we have a market interest rate of 10%. So first I'm going to draw the graph that illustrates what's going on here. We've got our demand curve. Starts at 2,000 and ends down here at 2,000. Um, we have our marginal cost curve, which is the same as our supply curve. Supply equals marginal cost. And it's constant, and that is at 400, which is price and quantity here. So um, if we had an unlimited amount of resources to extract, we would extract where our demand equals our marginal cost. And so to solve that, we just set those two equal to each other. So we have 400 equals 2,000 minus Q, or Q, we add Q to both sides, subtract 400, we end up with Q equals 2,000 minus 400, or Q equals 1,600. So if we had an unlimited amount of the resource, we would extract up to 1,600 units. After that, it would the extra benefit or what you could get from the market would be less than what the marginal cost of extracting it would be, so you wouldn't continue extracting. However, we know that we only have 1,200 units of Q, and so we have to stop extracting at 1,200. If we had 1,800 extractable units, we'd stop at 1,600 because we're in market equilibrium there. So in a one-time period situation, we would extract 1,200 units of Q, and the price would be, we can figure that out, it would be P equals 2,000 minus Q, which is 1,200, and our price would be $800 per unit. However, um, say we could extract this amount of units over two time periods, ignore the interest rate for now. Um, Let's say we extract half of each time period. So uh, we'll just say if we do half of each time period, we'll make this our time period right here. If we had $1,200, I mean 1,200 units, then we would extract 600 units in each period. Maybe right here. And our price would be. minus 600, which is 1,400. Now basically what Hotelling's rule states is that the marginal net revenue increases at the rate of interest. I'm going to write that out and explain that a little bit more. So Hotelling's rule can be written out as PI minus MT over 1 plus R over multiple periods is going to be equal. So we're going to do this in two periods. We're going to start with period 0 and period 1. And so if this is period 0, then we're just going to change these i's to zeros. The i's represent the period. And what you'll see is that this whole thing disappears because it's 0. It's, well, it's to the 1. Anything to the 0 power equals 1. And then this, it just becomes 1, so just 1 plus r. Now the price is going to increase over time because it's going to maximize the value over time of the resource for the producer that's extracting it. It has to do this because that time period of extraction in the future, the amount of money you get is going to be discounted. And so for that amount of money to be in the future equal to the amount of money in the present, the price has to increase based on the discount rate. That's what we see here. That's basically what Hotelling's rule states. So why don't we work out Hotelling's rule here with the interest rate to pick to to figure out what the maximum um, 
what the maximum efficiency is for society based on our discount rate of 10%. So we're going to substitute in that for R. Um, now what we're going to need to do is add in a few equations here to get some information to solve this. So what we know is that Q total equals 1,200. Well, that means that Q0 plus Q1 has to equal Q total. So if Q total equals 1,200, as we see here, and we can rewrite that as Q0 equals 1,200 minus Q1. And now we can rewrite this formula with one variable so we can solve it using our demand equation. Because this is the same with both periods. So we can write as P0 equals 2,000 minus Q0 and P1 equals 2,000 minus Q1. So that's what we're going to do. Over here, so P1000 minus Q1 minus MC equals 2,000 minus Q, it should be Q0, minus 2,000 minus Q1 minus MC. Our marginal cost is 400, so let me put that in right now. And then there is no discount on this side, because we're in period zero. And then we're going to put the discount on this side, 1 plus R, 1 plus 0.1. So now we're going to substitute in this so that we can get this all in terms of Q1. So now we have 2,000. Now we have 2,000 minus 1,200 minus Q1 minus 400 equals, all of this just stays the same, 2,000 minus Q1 minus 400, all of this is equal to 1. So now we're going to simplify this side. 2,000 minus 400 is going to be 1,600. 1,600 minus 1,200 is going to be 400. And don't forget we have to add Q1 because we have two negative signs. So be careful not to make that mistake. So, and then on this side we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go 1600 minus Q1 all at 1.1. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides by 1.1 to simplify. So it's going to be 440 plus Q1 equals 1600 minus Q1. Now we're going to add Q1 to both sides and subtract 400, or excuse me, 440. Oh, I forgot to distribute that one, so it's 1.1 Q1. So we end up with 2.1 Q1 equals 11.60. So divide both sides by 2.1. And we end up with Q1 equals 552.38. <clears throat> now to find out what Q0 is, it's really easy. We just go ahead and subtract Q1 from Q total, as we see on our relationship here. So we go Q0 equals 1200 minus 552.38. That means that Q0 equals 647.62. So now that we have our quantity in both time periods, we can go ahead and figure out what our price is in both time periods just by substituting our quantities into our demand equation. So let's go ahead and race to make some room to do that. Okay, we'll start with period zero. We go P0 equals 2,000 minus Q0, which is 647.62. Gives us 1,358.52.38. For P1, same thing, 
logarithm minus P1, which is 552.38. That gives us 1447.62. So now that we've done that, why don't we see what happens if we change the interest rate? What happens to our quantities in each period and our prices in each period? We're going to keep these written down in the corner so we can compare them. We're going to do the same thing all over again. Quantities haven't changed though, so this all stays the same. So um, we start with our Fotelli's rule, and so we substitute things back in, and what we end up with is P0 is going to be equal to 2000 minus Q0. We know Q0 is 1200 minus Q1, so we can write this as 1200 minus Q1 minus 400 equals P1 is going to be just. 2,000 minus Q1 oh, I'm write 2,000 in front uh, no discount rate on this side and this time we're going to write 1.2 because we have our new discount rate is going to be 20% instead of 10% and now we're going to go ahead and simplify. 2,000 minus 400 is 1,600, minus 1,200 is 400, minus Q1. 2,000 minus 400 is 1,600, minus Q1 all over 1 1.2. We're going to multiply both sides by 1.2 to simplify. And that's going to give us 480 minus 1.2 Q1 equals 1600 plus Q1. So we're going to get Q1 on one side, so we're going to subtract 480. We're going to add Q1, subtract 480, add Q1, and that ends up with 2.2 Q1 equals 1600 minus 4. So we end up with 2.2q equals 1120, divide both sides by 2.2, and q equals 509.09, and that is going to be q. So now we substitute back in to get Q0 again. So 1200 minus 509.09. Okay, now why don't we go ahead and figure out our prices. Just use our same formulas again, so we end up with P0 equals 2000 minus Q0, or Q0 is 690.91. Ninety point nine one, and there we 
go. So now that we've figured out the prices and quantities for different interest rates over multiple time periods, why don't we see how those prices compare to each other over time for different interest rates? Now what we have here is since we have two periods, period zero and period one, we're just going to be looking at those prices in each period for each interest rate, for each different interest rate. So we're going to use the 0.1 interest rate in pink. And what we see here is for point one, the price of period zero is 1352.38, so we'll put something right about here. And in period one, it was about 1447, so we're going to put it about right here. Now, we'll draw a line connecting those two. Now for the point two interest rate, we'll use the orange. And so uh, for our period zero, we are about 1309, so we'll put a period right about there, and for period one, we are about 1490, so we'll put a point right about here, and we connect those lines. So what we see, this is our point two interest rate, and this is our point one interest rate. What we see is that the, the interest rate as the interest rate increases, our price path increases. And what would happen is if we had an interest rate of 1, which means we had a perfect discount rate that we didn't care about the future at all, basically would have a straight line. We'd have all our extraction in period 0. Now, on the other hand, if we had an interest rate of 0, we'd have a completely flat price path, and we'd have equal extraction in period 0 and period 1, as we saw earlier. Well, that's about all I have to talk about today for our Italian's Rule. I hope you enjoyed this tutoring session.